Hi, y'all. Welcome to Ionic Formulas and Naming with Mr. P and Mr. Prabhakar. So we've been talking about ionic compounds and how those metals and nonmetals interact with each other, right? So we can kind of start looking at some patterns here. So with our metals always giving up their valence electrons, they're always getting rid of that negativity in their lives and getting a positive charge. So when you all have two valence electrons, getting rid of those is always going to form a positive two charge. Right, and for those non-metals, getting that negativity or toxicity in their lives, they're becoming more negative. For stuff with five valence electrons with three open spots, they're going to be always forming that negative three charge. So we can use those patterns with helping us writing ionic formulas out. So let's just look at how to write ionic formulas. So we got a couple examples over here. Um, so the first thing is you want to just write out the ion. So for sodium chloride, we take a look. At where sodium is on the periodic table, you already know the chemical symbol is Na. And you all notice in that first column, it's always going to form a positive one charge. And then for chlorine, it's got seven valence electrons. It has one open spot. We know our chemical symbol is Cl. It's always going to form that negative one charge, taking in that extra valence electron. So for sodium chloride, when we're looking at Na plus and Cl minus, they balance each other out. So our formula ends up being NaCl for sodium chloride. Example number two, barium nitride. So same thing here. We're just going to write out the ions. So for barium, chemical symbol is Ba. When we look on the periodic table, it's in that second column. So it's going to be a Ba plus 2. And then nitride, we find nitrogen, N, you all notice it's in the five valence electron column, so it forms a negative three charge. All right, so with barium and nitrogen, when they're trying to get together here, ooh, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, right? That positive and the negative, they're not going to balance each other out. So we can use that puzzle piece method that y'all were playing around with Java Lab earlier. Barium's got a positive two charge. So I'm going to just draw two pluses here. Nitrogen, N, and there's three negatives. We can kind of even take a look. Those aren't balanced yet. So got three, two. We got to add another barium ion out there to try to balance it out. But again, they're carrying a positive two charge. Is that balanced? Mm, no, nah, it's not. All right. What do we got to add? Let's add uh, another nitrogen ion. So nitrogen ion is going to carry a negative three. Um, four and six, that ain't balanced either. Shoot, what do we got to do? Yeah, let's go on and add another barium ion. Oop. All right, does that bounce out? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Yeah, perfect, right? So six positives and six negatives. So for this one, writing out the ionic compound formula for it, right? It's not going to be a one-to-one -one like that last time. Ba, how many bearing ions did we use? One, two, three. And how many nitrogen ions did we use? One, two. So we're going to put N, two. So this ionic formula is Ba, three, and two for barium nitride. All right, cool. So that's when we have two elements. Now we got something new. We got this thing called polyatomic ion. So poly, that just means many. So that's when you got a bunch of different atoms that are just stuck together and carry a charge with it. Those are what our polyatomic ions are. Um, and these polyatomic ions, their names tend to end with eight or eight. That's one way of being able to recognize these polyatomic ions. Um, so our example here. We got barium nitrate. Ooh, we got that eight ending. So that means we got a polyatomic ion somewhere there. So we already talked about barium. So let's get Ba plus two out there. Where y'all can find the polyatomic ions is in the back of your periodic table. So if y'all flip to the back of it, um, there should be a list of polyatomic ions out there. Another place you can find it is if y'all just pick up the handout in class um, that says polyatomic ions, you can grab them from there. So let's go and find nitrate. Hopefully you found it. Uh, nitrate is this right here, right? So it's the nitrogen ion stuck with three oxygens together. They carry a charge of negative one. So we're going to go ahead and write that out here. So my polyatomic ion, NO3, with a negative one charge. Is that barium and nitrate going to balance each other out? Not right. It's not a one-to-one -one thing. Um, so let's go and draw this out. Barium. Hopefully you can already see kind of what you need to do. But we'll use the puzzle method for this one too.
and then nitrate. I'm keeping NO3 together because, again, this is a polyatomic ion. Those things are stuck together. They're not going to separate out. Um, so what do we need more to balance it out? Hmm. Yep, so we're going to need another nitrate. Right? So um, we needed to add a second nitrate out there. So when these things are interacting with each other, when we write the formula out, we used one barium ion. And how many nitrates did we use? Right, we got one, two right there. So the way we're going to show that we have two NO3s, we can't just add that little two right after the three. That's going to look weird. It's going to look like a 32. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add, I don't know if you all have ever seen parentheses before, but parentheses are pretty cool because, you know, you use them when you're writing stuff. So there you go. All right, so in this case, we're saying that there are two sets of NO3. So we're putting that parentheses around, and the two's on the outside telling us that there's two nitrates. So we only do that when we're trying to say there's more than one polyatomic ion. All right, so ionic formula for this one is BaNO32. Cool. Um, I got some for you all to try. So go ahead and pause that video uh, and try running out the formulas for these. So after trying them, hopefully we got Al, Br, three for aluminum bromide and we got li two co3 that one was a polyatomic ion carbonate cool all right so that's writing ionic formulas let's get into naming them naming them now that we've written out the formula it should be a little bit easier i feel like so when you all have two elements binary ionic compounds i see i only got two elements i got ca and i got f um the metal that's always written first I'm just going to write out the element name for it, calcium. And then there's a little trick for the non-metal. So the non-metal, that ending, if you haven't noticed yet, is always ending with ide. So when we're talking about that ion, it's called fluoride in ion form. So this element is fluoride, and this compound is calcium fluoride. So CaF2, when we refer to it, we call it calcium fluoride. Um, that's when we got two elements. When we got polyatomic ions, so when we got more than two elements out there, so we got more than two elements. Um, I got Li, S, and I got O. So I got three different elements out there. So that means I got a polyatomic ion hidden out there. Metal, you still, if you see a metal out there, you're still going to name that the same. So my metal, Li, looking on the periodic table, is called lithium. Cool. Polyatomic ion. Shoot. All right. So I use lithium. What's left over? SO4. SO4 is left over. Let's look at our polyatomic ion chart. Take a look. Take a look. Did you find it? SO4 is called sulfate. Sulfate. So this compound, we got lithium sulfate. Cool. So Li2SO4 is referred to lithium sulfate. If it was SO3, that would be called sulfite the so3 version cool all right that's the stuff we got to know so we're responsible for naming and writing formulas for regular stuff and then with polyatomic ions there is a little trick when we're looking at the transition metals we're just going to go over it but don't stress about it um so transition metals they, they vary in charge they vary in valence electrons uh so looking at cubr cu we see is in the middle and Copper does form more than one charge. Um, so let's go and take a look at how we write this out. So Cu, we know is copper. Second element, Br, bromine. We're dealing with bromide because we're looking at the ion for copper bromide. Cool. Um, the one trick is we want to figure out which copper ion are we referring to, the positive one one or the positive two one. Shoot. All right. Um, what stuff do we know? We know that bromine always is going to form a negative one charge. When we look at that periodic table, so that means if we have a formula of CuBr, which copper ion would we have used? Yep, the positive one one, right? So that's the only way that's going to balance out to be CuBr for our formula. So the way we kind of write this out to show that we're using copper plus one is we use Roman numerals. So Roman numerals is what we use to indicate what charge we use for the metal ion. 
Cool. So CUBR is called copper one bromide. So that's how we name our ionic compounds. We got three to try. Got three to try. Don't stress about that third one. That's our challenge one. But try at least those first two. Hopefully we get those. Um, so going to pause the video. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see how we did. We got potassium nitride for this first one. Hopefully we got that. Second one, we got magnesium. Uh-oh, we got more than two elements. That means we got a polyatomic ion up in here. Potassium hydroxide. And then here's our challenge. Hopefully you at least got chromium and you also got bromide. Which Roman numeral are we going to be using for chromium? Hopefully you all toss that two out there. Cool. So chromium two bromide. That's naming ionic compounds, writing their formulas. Um, all right.